In Thundercats The Return, Lion O spends five years trapped in the Book of Omens, honing his skills, oblivious to the chaos unfolding outside. While he's locked away, Mumra wreaks havoc on Thundercat society and turns Thundera into his own dark empire. The once proud and free Thundercats were now left defeated, scattered, or enslaved. In this video, we will explore all five issues of Thundercats. The Return, which is not just a comeback story of Lion O and his gang, but also a story that is extremely mature and adult. Let's begin, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Issue 1. In this story, we start off with Snarf, but not the Snarf we're used to. This one's got a darker, more intense vibe. He's been waiting for Lion O for five long years. While Lion-O was supposed to be in the Book of Omens for just a day, Thundera's in trouble, and Snarf's getting antsy. He's having full-blown arguments with the book, and it's not clear if the book's actually talking back, or if Snarf's just cracking under the pressure. I'm leaning towards the latter. Finally, Snarf hits his limit, and cracks open the book. Out pops Lion-O, in full battle mode, taking down the dungeon guards like it's nothing. Classic Lion-O. He and Snarf have a quick catch-up, but it's soured by the realization that time did not pause while lion -O was in the book, contrary to what they expected. They figure Mumra must have messed with the spell. Who else, right? So anyway, after lion -O's return, Snarf fills him in on what went down. Things were looking good for Thundero with thousands returning home, and then Mumra hit them hard. Despite a valiant effort from the Thundercat, they were defeated, and Mumra took control, enslaving the remaining Thundarians. He's got a particular vendetta against Panthro and aims to break his spirit as a symbol of his dominance. The artwork gives us a glimpse of Thundera revamped in Mumra's image, complete with his face on a massive statue and his dark pyramid reigning over the city. lion -O, already on edge, is pushed even further by this new. He's ready to fight, but Snarf cautions him. The tables were turned, and Mumra is no longer the underdog. However, under the current circumstances, lion -O is. But lion -O's not the same cat he was five years ago. He's trained hard, and he's done playing nice with Mumra. Peeking through the eye of Thundera, he spots Panthro toiling away in the mines, and insists Snarf take him there, pronto. The story wraps up with Mumra lounging on his throne. Almost thrilled that lion -O's back to spice things up, he's been bored with the easy domination of the Thundarian. The final scene is a bit unsettling, showing Wily Kit and Wily Cat, now Mumra's scantily clad slaves, addressing him as Lord Mumra, which only adds a bitter twist to the tale. Issue 2 In the second issue, we dive right into the action with lion -O and Snarf stealthily approaching the mine. lion -O quickly sizes up the scene and then leaps into action, flipping and fighting with a ferocity we haven't seen before. This is not the honorable lion -O of old. This guy's a force of nature, and he takes down guards with their own weapons before grilling them for information, like a wildcat version of Batman. It's a whole new level of cool for lion -O fans. Meanwhile, Mumra's keeping an eye on lion -O's rampage through his magical surveillance setup, with Wily Kit and Wily Cat uncomfortably close by. And yep, it looks skimpier since the last issue. Or maybe it's just the angles in these panels. There's definitely a bit of fan service going on here. Mumra seems pretty chill about the whole thing, though, casually commenting on how he's just playing a game with lion -O, letting him witness the downfall of his city and friends before planning to take him out. But things take a dark turn when Mumra loses his patience with Wily Cat's response time and unleashes a blast of magic on her, which hurts her beyond measure. Back at the mines, we see Panthro getting whipped, and it's like everyone is just ignoring the chaos lion -O caused earlier. He's hidden away with Snarf, while he watches his former colleagues being beaten and chained. Snarf then creates a much-needed distraction, drawing a guard away and setting the stage for lion -O to unleash some serious mayhem. He goes to town on the mutants, chopping off chains and freeing the enslaved Thundarian. Panthro received his iconic nunchucks back from lion -O, and it seemed like he was ready to join the fray. One of the newly freed slaves steps up and says that they'll hold the fort so that Mumra's goons do not just storm in and massacre everyone. With that, lion -O, Panthro, and Snarf battle their way out of the cave. The issue closes on a powerful note with a close-up of Panthro, his eyes burning with resolve as he swears to end Mumra's reign once and for all. Issue 3 The issue starts off with a scene that's a bit hard to stomach. Mumra was lounging in a hot bath, and Wily Kit, now in a gold bikini that was somehow more revealing than her previous outfit, was tasked with scrubbing him down. Mumra, in a twisted sort of way, muses about lion -O's reaction if he saw Wily Kit in this role, and he does not even shy away from calling her his concubine. He goes further, taunting her about how lion -O would feel knowing she did not resist her new role, 
In fact, it's a scene that really hits a nerve. Next, Mumra summons Wily Cat to help bandage him up, all so he can continue his creepy surveillance of Lion as he watches. He starts speculating about lion -O's reaction when he eventually finds Chitara and learns of her current state and misplaced blame towards lion -O. Meanwhile, over in the guard's quarters, there's trouble brewing among the mutants. Two of them are grilling Tigra, wanting to know how his magical whip works, hoping to use it to overthrow Mumra. Tigra shuts them down, saying it's a Thundercat exclusive weapon. They don't take kindly to that and respond with a lash of a regular whip. Just then, Slythe crashes the party, furious at the mutinous chatter. He tells them about the current state of affairs in the law and reminds them they're all stuck under Mumra's thumb. The scene shifts to Slythe's alley, who suggests they make the best of their situation. This went on to take a rather grim turn as he gestured towards Jatara, who was chained up and barely clothed due to her torn costume. The mood gets tense as they start to close in on her, but Vulture Man steps in, of course, not to save her, but to demand information about Tigra's whip. Chitara, defiant as ever, spits in his face. Vulture Man is about to retaliate when Slythe intervenes, oddly expressing respect for Chitara's resilience and lamenting his own men's lack of such strength. He then reveals that Panthro has escaped, which naturally sparks a hint of hope in Chitara's eyes. In comes Snarf. He once again causes some commotion and draws the guards away. This distraction allows lion -O to swoop in and free Tigra. A brawl breaks out with the Thundercats, quite predictably. Gaining the upper hand, they release Chitara, who shares a moment with Panthro, but then delivers a stinging slap to lion -O before storming off. The issue wraps up with Mumra offering Wily Cat a deal, help trap lion -O, and he and Wily Kit can go free. Wily Cat, not known for his sharpness, buys into Mumra's promise, setting the stage for what's to come. Issue 4 Issue 4 opens with Wily Cat on his jet board and heads to the Thundercat's hideout. He tries to justify his betrayal the whole way there, even scratches himself up to sell the story that he fought his way out. Meanwhile, Mumra is gloating to Wily Kid about how easy it was to manipulate her brother. Wily Kid reaches her limit and takes a swing at Mumra, which of course, earns her another painful zap. Mumra coldly explains that he did not turn her brother evil, he just brought out what was already there. Back at the hideout, Chitara accuses him of abandoning his duties as their king. She's so furious she even punches him, and it takes Snarf and Panthro to calm things down. Lion-O vows to set things right, and that's when Wily Cat makes his entrance, convincing the Thundercats to follow him straight into Mumra's trap. Cut to Mumra, summoning some fresh muscle to deal with the Thundercats. The Thundercats sneak through the sewers and quickly take care of Mumra's new goon. Wily Cat leads them to the throne room, where he reveals his betrayal and demands that Mumra free him and his sister. Classic Mumra, he laughs it off, saying he never intended to let them go, and tosses Wily Cat into his ominous-looking cauldron. The issue ends, with Mumra bringing in some familiar mutant enemy to face off against the Thundercat. The issue ends, with Mumra bringing in some familiar mutant enemy to face off against the Thundercat. Issue 5 the issue starts with Wily Kit struggling to break free from Mumra's grip. He hauls her into a side room, saying she doesn't need to see the upcoming fight. True to form, the Thundercats engage in one of their epic group battles, laying waste to their enemies. After the dust settles, we see Mumra and Wily Kit again. He taunts her about her brother's betrayal and death. When she lashes out at him, he responds with a slap. But then Mumra's tone shifts, and he claims that he wanted to spare her from her friend's fate, and even suggests he has feelings for her. He releases her, then shifts into a supercharged battle form, ready for the Thundercats. Back in the fray, Wily Kit joins the action, finally unleashing the badassery we've been waiting for. Lionel, in a typical display of lone wolf bravery, decides to take on Mumra Sola. Despite it seeming like a risky move, Lionel simply wanted to handle things his way and was ready to face Mumra head on. Lionel faces off with Mumra who starts with a classic bad guy monologue about his grand plans for Thundera and its inhabitants. But then he reveals that his real goal was to draw lion -O in to get his hands on the Sword of Omen. lion -O, unfazed, calls Mumra out for his obsession with the sword and says that he does not even need it to win. He then places the sword aside, leading to an epic hand-to-hand -hand battle between the two. The fight reaches its climax when Panthro joins in and allows lion -O to deliver a punch to Mumra's chest symbol which reduces him to dust. It's a bit of an anti-climax, but hey, that's how it goes. After the dust settles, lion -O warns that Mumra is not gone for good. The final scene shifts to Mumra, already plotting his comeback. He talks about needing a new right-hand general, someone the Thundercats wouldn't suspect because they think he's dead. He gazes into his cauldron, revealing Wily Cat's face, which hints at the events for the upcoming series, Dogs of War. The comic book ends here, but it seemed pretty foolish on Mumra's part to let lion -O have his way but I guess the writers could not come up with a better idea.
Marvelous Verdict The series paints itself with pretty mature colors, especially in its depiction of Wily Kit and Chitara. Wily Kit spends the whole time in slave attire, while Chitara shows up in the third issue in a costume that's barely there. There's a reason behind it. Wily Kit's demeaning outfit is meant to evoke strong emotion, highlighting how Mumra is using her as a tool for his perverse gratification. It's a clear attempt to humiliate and belittle her. Chitara's situation mirrors this. Once a fierce warrior, she's now shown chained, almost naked, and in a vulnerable state. This is meant to stir feelings of distress and anger, aligning the reader against her oppressors. However, it's undeniable that some panels do feature gratuitous shots of them. Despite this, the emotional impact overshadows the sexualization for many. You feel angry at Mumra for his treatment of Wily Kit, and enraged by Chitara's plight and Photon Root for their empowerment and vengeance rather than focusing on the sexual aspects of the depiction. And it works. Once Wily Kit breaks free, she transforms into an incredibly badass character. She embraces her sexuality and her past struggles to become ready to take on the world. By the end of the last issue, Wily Kit practically overshadows Lionel and comes off as a fearless leader. As always, perspectives may vary, especially based on individual sensitivities to such portrayal. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.